Chemistry 4131 Heat of Combustion Using a Power Bump Calorimeter Here shows a simplified drawing of a bump calorimeter. A insulating wall ensures adiabatic process. A constant volume reactor is immersed in DI water. Organic sample can be placed inside the sample cup and the reactor is under oxygen atmosphere. Two uh, electrical wires or ignition wires can start a fire inside the reactor, which causes a uh, combustion reaction to start. The reaction is exothermic, which releases heat into uh, DI water uh, or the water bath. And a stirrer keeps the temperature of the water bath uniform. The temperature is measured by a thermometer. Now this drawing closely resembles the setup we are going to use in our lab. Outside the calorimeter is a insulating jacket. Inside the jacket, there is a, a bucket that can be filled with DI water. The stirrer is controlled by electrical motor and the thermometer measures the temperature of the water bath. The reactor is made of stainless steel. The cap or the head of the stainless steel bump reactor can be conveniently placed on a support stand. An organic sample is first pressed into a pellet, which is then placed into the sample cup. And then a electrical wire is placed on top of this uh, sample and the two ends uh, is connected uh, to the two ignition wires. The head is then screwed onto the top of the reactor to seal the stainless steel reactor. Before this reactor is placed inside the calorimeter, it must be flushed with oxygen gas so that the reactor is under oxygen atmosphere. The heat of combustion refers to the enthalpy change of a combustion reaction under constant pressure at a particular temperature. Here, R represents reactant, P represents the product for the combustion reaction, and T1 is the temperature. Now, if the reaction is a constant volume, then the heat is related to internal energy change. So in this experiment, we first measure the internal energy change of the combustion reaction, which then can be uh, converted to enthalpy change. Now, if we start the reaction at the T1, when the reaction finish, the product may have different temperature. For example, if we start at 25 Celsius, in this calorimeter, uh, when the reaction finish, the product temperature may be 28 Celsius, slightly higher than the reactants. Now here, R again represents reactants, it's an organic sample inside the reactor. CAL means calorimeter, which includes everything else in the system. That uh, is the uh, reactor itself, uh, water bath, etc. For the whole system, uh, it's adiabatic process, means Q is zero, and volume is constant, so uh, W is zero. According to the first law, delta U must be zero. Okay, now remember, internal energy is a state function. So we can imagine from reactants to product go different paths. For example, we can let the reactants form product. So note that this is reactants forms product, but temperature keep constant at the T1. All right. And then the whole system from T1 
becomes T2. Okay, so note that the product doesn't change. All right, it's the change of temperature at the second step. Now, in the first step, the internal energy change is only due to the chemical reaction. Okay, because temperature doesn't change. So this reaction is a combustion reaction. So this is the internal energy change that we want to measure for combustion reaction, internal energy change at a constant temperature. Now the second step is due to the temperature change. So the internal energy change can be calculated by the delta T times heat capacity. Okay, according to Hess law, delta U1 plus delta U2 equals the total delta U, which is zero. And therefore, delta U1 should be negative delta U2. And the delta U2 is negative, is heat capacity times temperature change. Now, there are several things we need to consider. Okay, One is, uh, because we add the wires, the fuels, inside the reactor to start the reaction. And in the process, the wire bones release heat, and this heat also uh, cause some temperature change. So that's something we need to consider. Another th uh, thing we need to consider is if we have nitrogen gas in the system, nitrogen react with oxygen forms nitrogen oxide, which forms nitric acid, also release heat. So we have two uh, corrections. Okay, one is due to the formation of nitric acid, and the other is due to the combustion of the fuse wire. Okay, the negative sign indicates they release heat. Okay, same thing is for internal energy change. Uh, in this case, it's a negative value. Okay, so using this equation we can calculate internal energy change for the chemical reaction if we can measure the temperature change and if we know the heat capacity. So this experiment includes two parts. In part one, okay, we use a compound that has known delta U. So by measuring delta T, we can calculate the heat capacity of the calorimeter. Okay? And then in part two, we measure an unknown sample. Okay, we calculate, okay, we can measure unknown or uh, a, a different organic sample. All right, we measure temperature change using the heat capacity from part one, then we can calculate delta U, okay, the chemical reaction internal energy of this uh, organic sample and then which can be converted to delta H. Alternatively, we can choose the reactor as the system and everything else is the surrounding. So the system change from reactants to product, from temperature T1 to T2. And because it's a constant volume, work is zero. According to the first law, delta U equals Q. And this delta U and the Q are both for system. Now system Q is negative surrounding Q, which is negative the calorimeter heat capacity times temperature change. For te internal energy of the system, we can imagine it go through two steps. First, the reactant forms product remains T1, and then the product change temperature to, to T2. According to Hess law, the total internal energy should be delta U1 plus delta U2. Now delta U2 is due to the temperature change. So this should equal to the heat capacity of the system times temperature change. Now imagine the system is uh, only have one gram of organic sample compared to 2000 milliliter of water. And so this heat capacity is very small that it can be omitted. In other words, the total delta U is approximately delta U1. 
the temperature change has little effect on the internal energy change. Now, if we also count the uh, corrections of heat of formation of nitric acid and the heat of combustion of fuse wires, then we got the same equation that we obtained from the last slide. To find the heat capacity of a calorimeter, we perform combustion reaction on a benzoic acid. You can find the standard internal energy of this reaction from a chemistry literature, including a pick and textbook or a chemistry journal. You need to cite uh, the source in your uh, report. Now, if enthalpy, okay, standard enthalpy of the reaction is given in the literature, you need to convert it into uh, internal energy by the equation delta H equals delta U plus delta N of the gas phase times RT. From previous slides, we have the equation internal energy change with corrections equals negative heat capacity times temperature change. And from this equation, we can calculate heat capacity. Now, the internal energy change is the total and the internal energy change of the reaction, which can be calculated by the standard internal energy in terms of kilojoule per gram times the mass of benzoic acid added to the reactor. Now for corrections, uh, if we flush the reactor with pure oxygen so that there's no nitrogen in the system, then the heat of formation of nitric acid can be eliminated. For the fuse uh, wire, uh, we need to measure uh, before the length before the reaction and the length after reaction. And this gives you the uh, length of the fuse consumed in the reaction. And this times the heat of combustion of the wire uh, in terms of grams uh, a kilogram, kilojoule or joule per centimeter times the length, okay? That gives you E3. Note that the reaction forms liquid water. If liquid water vaporizes to uh, gas water, then the vaporization enthalpy needs to be added uh, when you calculate internal energy change. In order to eliminate this uh, interference, uh, we can add one milliliter of DI water into the uh, reactor before it is sealed. With the heat capacity of calorimeter calculated from last slide, we are now ready to measure the heat of combustion of organic samples such as naphthalene. Again, we use the same equation, internal energy of the reaction with corrections equals negative heat capacity of calorimeter times temperature change. The heat of uh, formation of nitric acid can be eliminated and the delta U of the reaction can be calculated by the standard internal energy in terms of kilojoule per gram times the grams, okay, the mass of an uh, organic sample, all right? And the internal energy of the reaction per gram can be calculated. This can be converted to the standard internal energy per mole or molar internal energy change. Using this equation, we can calculate the enthalpy change of the combustion reaction. So for naphthalene, um, the gas phase reactants has 12 moles, the product has 10. So delta N is 10 minus 12 equals negative 2. All right. So using this equation, uh, the standard uh, combustion heat of combustion uh, per mole can be calculated. And this should be compared to the literature value. Now, there are many uh, sources you can check the literature value. Uh, two examples are uh, our textbook. 
or CRC Handbook of Chemistry of Physics. Now you must check these uh, sources to see if they have this uh, entropy of combustion for the particular compound before you cite them. All right, and uh, our school library has this CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics. Maybe they have different version, so check that. The key of this experiment is to accurately measure the temperature change due to the chemical reaction. Ideally, the temperatures before and after reaction are stable, irrelevant to time. In this case, delta T can be easily calculated by the temperature after reaction minus temperature before reaction. In reality, the system may not be completely adiabatic. That means heat can go from system to the surrounding or surrounding goes to the system. Or the stereo may also add heat to the system. So in this case, the temperature before reaction can may change with time and temperature after reaction also change time and they may have different slope. So in this case, how do we calculate delta T only due to the chemical reaction? Suppose Ta is the time of firing, or the time when the reaction starts. Tc is the time after reaction, and when the rate of temperature change becomes constant. Note that before C, temperature versus time is a curved line. After C, it becomes a straight line. In theory, we can find a vertical line so that these two shaded regions have equal area. If we extrapolate the pre and the post reaction temperature drift lines, the intersections are initial temperature Ti, final temperature Tf, and the difference is the temperature change due to the chemical reaction. Note that this vertical line is closer to A than to C, and the temperature rise at point B is about 0.63 or 63% of total temperature rise. And this fact can be used as an alternative way to find this vertical line and consequently delta T. And this method will be illustrated in the next slide. To find the temperature rise, first find the middle of the reaction period. In this case, the time of start is 5 minutes. The time of finish is 13, so the middle of the time period is 9. Draw a vertical line and measure the distance r between the two extrapolated temperature drift lines. And this is the estimated total temperature rise. And now, from the pre-reaction drift line, draw a segment whose length is 63% of r, the total temperature rise. Now move this segment towards the left side until it touches the thermogram that gives you point B uh, whose temperature reaches 63% of the total rise. Through B, draw a vertical line. This gives you Ti and Tf. The difference is the temperature change due to the chemical reaction. Each sample needs at least two runs, preferably three runs. For example, in standardizing calorimeter, uh, at least two benzoic acid samples are needed. So from the two runs, two heat capacities are calculated, and then the average heat capacity can be calculated. This average heat capacity will be used for the second part of calculation. Standard, uh, standard deviation uh, also needs to be calculated. To report your results, we use 95 confidence range using this equation. This is the mean value or average value, for example, the average heat capacity. And this is the standard deviation, and uh, n is the number of runs, for example, uh, three runs. So three runs is here, 95% uh, confidence 
and that give you t uh, here is a kf value 4.3430 which plugs in here and you calculate uh, the range uh, for 95% uh, con confidence. Your lab report should include a title page, an abstract, an introduction, experimental and the procedure, data and the calculations. You can pause this video to read the detailed information of each section, followed by results, discussion, conclusions, references, and the appendix. Thank <laughs> you.